we have to acknowledge that there's a problem. Too many legislators are being selected by party leaders rather than elected by the voters. Montgomery County Senator Cheryl Kagan is among a number of lawmakers looking to make changes in Maryland's elections. One of her bills takes aim at filling vacant legislative seats, making changes through a constitutional amendment that could appear on November's ballot. We need to bring democracy back so that when there are vacancies, as there have been many in the Moore Miller administration, taking a bunch of really good legislators, we want to fill the vacancies with people's, people that the voters have selected. The question is how to do that and what the best method is. I prefer special mail-in ballots because voters are getting used to that. The turnout's going to be higher and people have the time to think about it. Right now, when a state, senate, or house seat opens up during a term, local central committees select a replacement, send that recommendation to the governor, who then makes the appointment. A recent survey indicates that Maryland residents, though, may be ready for a change. When asked if the current method of replacing vacant legislative seats should be continued, 85% who were surveyed indicated they favored having a special election to fill those vacancies. 13% said they supported the current practice. But special elections do come at a cost to both the state and local governments. There is no price on democracy. Nikki Tyree is the executive director of the League of Women Voters of Maryland. She was among those testifying in support of special elections before our Senate committee this week. I mean, I think cost is always something we have to worry about, especially in this economy. But like I said, I would really urge people to not put a price tag on democracy and on, um, you know, voter enfranchisement. I think it's easy to get caught up in the numbers, but this bill is a very, very small number compared to a lot of the bills that will pass this session. Another bill before lawmakers would allow the state's 900,000 unaffiliated voters to register in person during early primary election voting. I think that the problem that we're seeing with unaffiliated voters is that a lot of them land on that when they either truly do want to be unaffiliated or if they're not sure which party they want to belong to or they don't feel like either party represents them or what we're seeing with younger voters, which is they know neither party represents them. This bill would allow people to still participate in the democratic system while also having the information that they need. Lawmakers are also being asked to consider ranked choice voting, simplified ballot language, and updating the voting recount system. In Annapolis, I'm Sue Copen for State Circle.